All right, so let's uh, let's go on, and we can flip the um, the use of our table around, and we can say something like, um, "How heavy is a beagle?" Beagle male, if he is in the, uh, we'll we'll start off with the easiest. 50th percentile. Okay. So, uh, if you're not familiar with percentiles, the idea behind a percentile is that if you're in the 50th percentile, 50% of everyone else in the population have values smaller than yours. Okay. If you're in the 80th percentile, then that means 80% of the population has values smaller than yours. Okay, so if he's in the 50th percentile, that means basically 50% of the population has a smaller value, or in this case, has a lower weight if we're talking about weight. Okay, and if he's in the 80th percentile, maybe I'll, I'll throw up the next question. How heavy is a beagle? Is a beagle male? If he is in the 80th percentile. Okay, so again, we're going to uh, assume the same information. We'll say beagle weights Beagle male weights follows normal distribution, mean 23, standard deviation 1.5. Okay. So this first one should be e easy, right? What's our answer here? How heavy is the beagle male if he's in the 50th percentile? Your answer is 23 pounds, right? Because the mean is the median, is the halfway point. So a beagle male that is in the 50th percentile is going to be right at the median, or, or the mean, and that's going to be 23 pounds. That's easy. Okay, but what about this one? How heavy is a beagle if he is in the 80th percentile? So again, that means 80% of the population has a smaller value. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so what do we do here? Do the chart first. Yeah, so now we start at the chart, and we're looking for the z-score that corresponds to the 80th percentile. So what is the z-score that's going to give me an area to the left of 80%? Okay, so looking at the table, I don't see the area 0.8 exactly. Okay, I see 0.7995 and 0.8023. So between these two numbers, which number is closer to 0 0.80? 0 0.7995, right? This is 5 ten thousandths away, and this one's 23 ten thousandths away. So this one is closer, and so this corresponds to a z-score of of what? 0 0.84, okay? So we go to the table first and try to find the z-score that gives an area of 0 0.8, okay? The closest value I can find closest value we can find to 0.8 is 0 0.7995, okay? And 7, 0.7995 has a z, uh, corresponds to the z-score of 0 0.84, okay? Okay, so our z-score is 0 0.84. What is that in terms of Beagle male weight. 
So to be, have a z-score of 0 0.84 means I am 0.84 standard deviations above the mean. All right? So my weight of the beagle male is going to be the mean, 23, plus 0.84 of a standard deviation more. 0.84 times 1.5. Does that make sense? Okay. Or another way we can think about if if this is a little um, too tricky, or not too tricky, but just it's a little uh, hard to get your mind around, we can just say z is equal to y minus mu over sigma. And I can say, well, z I found to be 0 0.84 is equal to y, which is the weight that I'm looking for, minus 23 divided by 1.5. If I multiply both sides by 1.5, I now have 0 0.84 times 1.5 is equal to y minus 23. And solving for y, I get the exact same thing, 23 plus 0 0.84 times 1.5. So I get the exact same thing here and here. And so I see that the weight that corresponds to the 80th percentile is... 0 0.84 times 1.5 plus 23, 24.26 pounds. Okay, so a dog, beagle male weighing 24.26 pounds will be in the 80th percentile. Is that all right? Okay, so let's try this out. How heavy is a beagle male if he is in the 10th percentile? Okay, so I'll write that up. So we'll say how heavy is a beagle male in the 10th percentile? And again, we'll say weights follow a normal distribution, mean 23, standard deviation 1.5. Okay, so go ahead and take a minute to work on that. I'm going to pause the video right here. Okay, so uh, we're going to start off, and we're going to look at our table, and we're going to see what, what value in the table corresponds to an area of 10%. So we want the area to the left to be 10%, and we look this up, and the closest number I can find is right here, 0 0.1003, and that corresponds to a z-score of negative 1.28, okay? So uh, from the table, z equal to negative 1.28 um, corresponds to an area 0 0.1003. Okay, so this is our closest value, so we're going to use this. Okay, so we can, you know, plug this in and we say y is equal to y minus mu over sigma, or I can just, you know, and I can say negative 1.28 is equal to the y that I'm looking for minus the mean of 23 divided by 1.5. Or I can also, you know, conversely, you know, if I solve for this, I come to the same conclusion that the weight that I'm looking for is one and a half standard deviations, I'm sorry, not one and a half, uh, 1.28 standard deviations below the mean. So I'm going to, my mean is 23, and I'm 1.28 standard deviations below the mean. Each standard deviation is 1.5 pounds. Okay, so I do this, and punching this in, I get 23 minus 1.28 times 1.5, and I get a weight of 21.08 pounds. Hope that matches all of the work that you guys got. And so we say, uh, how heavy is a beagle male in the 10th percentile? Basically, 21 pounds. Where did you get the, uh, the uh, area? Uh, from the chart. So, so when I say the 10th percentile, the number I'm looking for 
is the number that's closest to 10%. Okay, so looking in the chart, you know, I see uh, 0.0985 and 0.1003, okay? Between these two numbers, this is the closest one, okay? 0.1003 is the closest number to 10%, 10% being 0 0.10 exactly. Okay, so this is, this is the number in the table closest to 10% exactly, and that is z equal to negative 1.28. Right, are you able to see it? Yeah. So, so right here, we want uh, this number right here. Okay. Two. One, negative 1.28. <laughs> it should be in the row negative 1.2 and the column 0 0.08. Okay, so um, what well, we still have some more stuff to cover, so I want to, I'm going to keep moving on here, okay? There's a section on, uh, in your book called Assessing Normality, okay? And the, our main tool is called a QQ, QQ plot, or also known as a normal probability plot. And depending on the software and depending on how it's um, printed, um, basically, if you take uh, the idea is you take a data, a bunch of data. So um, you've got numeric data, and you have the question: Does my numeric data come from a normal distribution? And, uh, and to answer this, okay, one tool, one tool to assess normality is the QQ plot or the normal pro, you know, same thing, Q, QQ normal plot sometimes is what it's called, or normal probability plot. And if it is normal, your data will look kind of like they go in a straight line. Okay, if normal. And if it's not normal, you'll see, uh, you know, things that go like this. Okay, or or other shapes. You know. Basically, if it's not a straight line, it's not normal, okay? Uh, and that's really uh, just the main point that, uh, that you need to know, is that there, we have tools to try to estimate whether or not Data comes from a normal distribution. Is and this the lowest area? No, this is this is a normal QQ plot. Okay, and it's just one way to see if the data we have come from a normal distribution. All right. Okay. So let me uh, and then uh, just an, another thing. Okay. So then I'm, I'm taking a jump in our textbook into chapter 5. And, and this is the normal approximation to the binomial. All right, so I'm hoping you guys remember the binomial distribution. Do we? Kind of? Okay, so um, let's just a uh, quick review. Let's say um, we have a coin flip and let's say um, this is a special coin so the probability of getting heads 
is 0.8, okay? And we will flip it 10 times and I ask, what is the probability of getting eight heads or nine heads? Okay, how do I answer this? So this is review. So I would do what, choose what, Uh, choose eight. 10 choose 8, that's fine. 10 choose 8, and then I would do what? Probability of getting heads, 0. 0.8, and I would need how many of those? 8 of them. And how, prob what's the probability of getting tails then? 0. 0.2, and how many do, of those do I need? 2. 2, okay. And then, so that's 8 heads, and what do, what do I do for 9 heads? Uh, so I would take that and I would add 10 choose 9. nine. And then what? 0.8 raised to the 9 and 0.2 raised to the 1. Familiar? Yeah, I mean, OK. All right, what if I complicate, not complicated this, but let's say uh, now we're going to do um, a coin flip. Same thing, probability of heads is still 0.8. This time I'm going to flip it 100 times. And I'm going to ask, what is the probability of getting between 70 heads and 90 heads, inclusive? How would I answer this? So the first, yeah, same way, but what, okay, so the first one I would have to do would be what? 100 choose 70, 0.8 to the 70, 0.2 to the 30, okay? And then I would have to do 100 choose 71, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 100 choose 72. Etc. 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 All the way up to, and what would the last one be? 100 choose 90. 0.8 to the 90. 0.2 to the 10. Right. So you know, here, how many numbers am I adding? I'm it's like 21 numbers I've got to compute. Right. This is like 21 things to calculate. Okay. This is tedious. Well, so um, well in a moment here, I'm going to show you how we can do this with a computer. Okay, with a computer, this is straightforward. You can have the computer punch out, crunch all 21 things very quickly. Okay, but if you had to do it by hand, this would be rather tedious, and we don't want to do that. So, the normal model can approximate the binomial model quite well. Okay. Can I go to the next slide? Basically, I, from this, all you need to do is say this, is gonna, this thing is going to be tedious, okay? So we're going to still try to answer the same question, okay? Probability of heads, 0.8, okay? Flip 100 times. And we want to know what is the probability of getting between 70 and 90 heads, inclusive. Okay, that's what we want to know. Okay, so we're going to use the normal approximation. Okay, and the idea behind the normal approximation is that you know, your binomial model looks, at a certain point, looks like the normal distribution, okay? So if 
n times p in the binomial is greater than or equal to 10 and n times p, I'm sorry, n times 1 minus p is also greater than or equal to 10, then the binomial looks a lot like the normal. OK, so in our case, n is 100 and p is 0.8, right? So n times p is 80, and n times 1 minus p is 20. Both of those numbers are bigger than 10. My distribution looks a lot like the normal distribution. So in our case, you know, 100 times 0 0.8 is 80. 100 times 0 0.2 is 20, both greater than or equal to 10. So the binomial looks a lot like normal. All normal distributions have a mean, or is defined by the mean and standard deviation. Okay? The binomial distributions are defined by n and p. But what is the mean of the binomial distribution? What's the standard deviation of the binomial distribution? Yeah, the mean is n times p. Okay? So for the binomial distribution, The mean mu is equal to n times p, and the standard deviation, sigma, is equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Okay. And so we're going to use this knowledge and, uh, for our normal approximation we set mu equal to n times p and sigma equal to the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Okay, so basically we say, well, we know the mean of the binomial, and we know the standard deviation of the binomial, and we know our binomial distribution looks a lot like the normal distribution. So we're going to pretend we've got a normal distribution with the same mean and same standard deviation. Okay? So this thing, which would require a whole bunch of binomial calculations, we can approximate with the normal distribution. Okay? And so we're going to approximate we will approximate our answer with normal model with a mean of 80 okay so n times p is equal to 80 and the square root of n times p times 1 minus p is going to be the square root of 16 right so we get 4 If I do 100 times 0.8 times 0.2, I get 16, and I take the square root of that, 4. Is that okay? All right. And so now, let me um, let me. See. Take this and so we're going to uh, let's uh, copy this again. So now I've got a normal model with a mean of 80. So right in the middle, I'm going to stick the number 80, and I'm going to go down to here and up to here, 70, and go up to 90. And I want to know how much is in between there and there. Okay. 
but there's a catch all right so let me um, let me flip over to the next page okay and then so we've we've established that we're going to approximate with a mean of normal with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 4 okay and so I'm going down right here okay and this is 70 and I'm going over to here to 90 okay so you have to remember that the binomial distribution is discrete okay so you gotta imagine little bars here so imagine a bar centered at 70 and a bar centered at 90 okay because you know our, our distribution is really just a whole bunch of you know, it's not quite like this, but it's something like this, right? We've got a whole bunch of whole number answers because the discrete, I mean, the binomial distribution is discrete, okay? The normal distribution is continuous. So you just pretend we've got a bar here, okay? And so I've got a bar centered at 90, and next to it I've got a bar centered at 91, okay? And the bar centered at 91 goes like this, okay? So I want to, if I do my cutoff line at 90, I'm only going to have half of this bar, okay? And if I go to 91, I'm going to have half of the 91 bar, which I don't want. So where should I actually draw my cutoff? Not at 90 or 91, but at 90.5, right? So I'm going to draw a cutoff line halfway in between 90 and 91 at 90.5, okay? And so using the same line of thinking over here, where should I draw my cutoff? I want to include the bar for 70, right? Because I said 70 to 90 inclusive. So I want to include the entire bar for 70. So I should draw my cutoff over here at 69.5. OK. So basically, now I'm going to ask, what is the area between 69.5 and 90.5? Okay. So the fact that I'm adding on a plus 0.5 or subtracting a 0.5, this is known as the continuity correction. Okay. It just means you go, you've got a discrete thing like the binomial and we're trying to approximate it with a continuous thing, the normal, okay? This is the only time you use a continuity correction, okay? Sometimes students try to apply the continuity correction in other situations. If you're dealing with just the normal distribution, don't do the continuity correction. If you're dealing just with the binomial distribution, don't do a continuity correction. The only time you use the continuity correction is if you've got the binomial, and you're trying to approximate it with the normal. That's the only time you use it. Only when you've got the binomial and you're trying to approximate it with the normal, or you've got a discrete theory and you're trying to approximate it with a norm, um, continuous thing, that's the only time you use the continuity correction. Don't, don't be o overzealous and start adding or subtracting 0.5 to things that don't need it. Okay, so we want to know what's the area between 69.5 and 90.5, okay? So, um, so we can do this, okay? And the way we're going to do this is we're going to find the area to the left of 90.5, and then we're going to find the area to the left of 69.5, and then I'm going to subtract this area off of this this bigger area and what I'm left with is the area in between does that make sense okay so let's try this out so what is the area to the left of 90.5 okay so I'm gonna have to find my z-score so I do z is equal to 90.5 minus 80 divided by the standard deviation of 4 I get a z-score of 
So maybe I'll round that up to 2.63. Okay, and over here, I do the same thing, and I get z is equal to 69.5 minus 80 over 4, and I get z is equal to negative 2.63. Okay. Just chance that there's similar? Well, I mean, uh, I'm um, 10 units above the mean and 10 units below the mean, so it makes, makes sense, sense. They should be the that I should have the same z-score, right? Okay, so, so we're going to go to our table and we find how much is to the left of 2.63. And I see 2.63, the area to the left is 0.9957. Okay. So, um, area to the left of plus 2.63 is 0 0.9957. And then I'm going to do area to the left of negative 2.63, and that's going to be 0 0.0043. Okay, so the area in between is going to be 0 0.9957 minus 0 0.0043. And I get 0.9914, so like 99%. So if I flip the coin 100 times, and I've got a 80% probability of getting heads, then 99% of the time I'm going to get between 70 and 90 heads. Maybe 1 in 100 times I get something outside of that. 91 or 70, 69 heads or something like that. So this is uh, an answer to the other question that we had, which it would have required 21 binomial calculations. Okay, and this this is going to be very, very, very close to the actual answer. Does this make sense? Okay. If we had the time, I would like to do another example, but um, but we don't. So I'm going to just leave it and say uh, do your homework and try out the examples. And I hope it's clear from uh, the homework. And uh, I've got like a old video on that I've made on how to solve these problems that I hope makes sense. Okay, um, but this week I need to spend some time going over the lab assignment that I'm assigning, okay? So I'm going to just uh, pause the video here or stop the video here.